Hello everyone and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. Something pretty unique today, something that I didn't think I'd ever get the opportunity to review. Let's just move my phone out of the way. This thing. This is a 27 year old Macallan, which has been bottled for numerous different reasons really. Um, let me get this out so you can see it. A rather beautiful presentation. Kind of classic velvet line box. Uh, this isn't my bottle. I want to point that out right now. This is being sold via ballot for Mark Littler um, Whiskey Brokers. Um, privilege to say, I actually have tried this whiskey in the past, and if you go into Mark's website, uh, I did the official tasting notes for it when I had a much thicker head of hair, as you'll see from the picture. Mark has sent me this just to give like a sort of more full review for the product. Um, there's loads going on with this. So first of all, within this box, you'll see this kind of stamped envelope in there. Um, I'm not going to open that because it's not mine to open, but within there is a letter of authenticity. This is bottle five of 90. Uh, bottled at natural cash strength, 41%, natural color, natural filters. And also in that envelope is a rough sketch of what this logo would have looked like. Um, there's a bit of a dedication to David Holmes in this. I won't go into too much detail. I have linked Mark's website below in the information box so you can head there and read the huge write-up that Mark has done on this. And he's selling this on behalf of someone who had a cask of Macallan. Um, Ex-American Oak Macallan, which in itself is pretty unusual. And um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But yes, just look at this thing. It's a Glencairn Crystal Decanter. Very chunky, very wide. Fits in the hand quite well. I'm just gonna put that back in its little home. Um, try and leave it in shot, maybe like just there. Make sure my elbow doesn't get to it because that's rather expensive. Ex-American Oak Macallan. Pretty unusual if I move my head out of the way. It is this stunningly light color. And when it comes to single cast Macallan, I'm just gonna move that for safety. I'm pretty sure these days that I've heard through numerous sources that Macallan don't actually buy American oak anymore. Um, could be wrong, could be right, never know. They do use American oak that's been seasoned with sherry, uh, as, well as, the, as well as their European oak, but they don't actually fill bourbon casks as far as I'm aware anymore, which adds another dimension of interest to this bottle, because we are all so used to seeing Macallan and sherry. It's classic Macallan, right? But this is a little bit more unusual, um, and as you can see by the box, with the C, the R, and the three in the middle, this has also been bottled, not only as a commemoration to David Holmes and the fact there's only 90 bottles of it, it also has been bottled to celebrate the coronation of King Charles III. And it features on the front of it all four flags of the United Kingdom, along with a little bit more information too. But, 27-year-old natural cash strength Macallan. Not a regular thing here at Whiskey Wednesday, but let's smell, let's taste, and let's see what's going on. Now, as I said, I have had the privilege of trying this two or three months ago, maybe even further ago from that point. Um, but I still remember it. And it's so interesting to smell Macallan that hasn't sat in sherry and how wonderfully delicate and light this spirit can be. Um, straight off the front of this thing, it is loaded with like lemon zest, lemon meringue dessert, and pineapple in every form you can think of. I'm specifically thinking of those old like chewy pineapple gummy sweets that you can still buy. There's a very pleasant grassiness to it, which really like in the biggest way possible reminds me of a lot of very good lowland whiskey I've had the privilege to try. Um, it is quite reminiscent of Daff Mill to smell and the one sample of St. Magdalene that I've tried for that one guy who commented and was like, oh, I try St. Magdalene all the time. Sorry, get a bit vicious there. Uh, the one St. Magdalene I've tried, the smell does remind me of that, but you know, with those very good lowland whiskies, they're buttery, they're lemony, they're very grassy. They have this kind of dried grass quality to them and this is packed with it. Some of the more unusual notes that I get here and it leads me on a little bit of a course significantly further north than talking about the lowlands and Speyside where the whiskey was distilled. 
There is both a saltiness to this whiskey on the nose and kind of a waxiness too, which automatically puts me in Klein Leash Brewer area, you know. There's no peat to it at all, but it certainly has that kind of old Pulteney Klein Leash coastal saltiness. And then that combined with the lemony thing and the buttery thing and the pineapple thing and the kind of, because we've not got sherry kind of dominating the spirit, we still have like a malty creaminess, like a biscuity grist like quality to the smell. Quite funny actually, doing this now, it's starting to get a bit darker outside, but today's like the hottest day I've experienced in Manchester in the four months of the year so far. Um, so this is actually working quite well with what I can see out the window. And then there's some classic stuff too. We've got a bit of toffee, we've got a bit of honeycomb. But all in all, it's fragrant and sweet. Kind of what you want from older Speyside whiskey, really. Uh, but let's taste it. It's always where the magic is. I'm just trying to remember to a time when I last got to try a Macallan or any whiskey really that's that old and it's rare so this thing's doing a lot and I think that was in one of my original notes to Mark when I first tried it there is up front that kind of caramel honey biscuity sweetness that you get from Refill American Oak. As you leave this thing on your mouth and you move it around, the palate turns into this very gently spicy, and I mean that in the, the most like positive way. It just kind of lines the side of your mouth with a little bit of oak spice, a tiny bit of pepper. The texture of it is wonderful. It's very rich and voluminous. And then that salty thing we got on the nose as we were smelling it, that really pulls back in towards the end. And it really does transport you to like the very northern Highland style of whiskey. Um, and again, I, I can only really reach for things like Clang Leash and Old Pulteney. Um, I don't get an ounce of smoke on the thing at all. And the finish now, even as I'm still talking to you, it's gentle, but there are some just nice strong flavors coming through. Again, it's this biscuity, malty, gristy. For those of us that have been in distilleries that still have uh, malt mills, um, or sorry, barley mills that you can smell the grist through. It's just full of that. It's like being in Bao Blair's filling room the time I was there and they were filling fresh bourbon casks and that smell of like digestive biscuits and damp American oak and caramel and toffee. It's an incredible smell. Nice nostalgic memory with this. It's a fragrant mildly complex, delicate, layered style of whiskey. Um, and as there are only 90 bottles of it, it's currently and will only be available through a ballot, which I think ends May 6th, which should be after this video comes out, I believe. Um, and as a result, the price tag, it's not a light price tag, it is just under 2,600 pounds a bottle, which is expensive. Um, but it does come with a lot more bells and whistles than most actual official Macallan bottles do. And in my opinion, a slightly nicer bottle. Um, the original score I gave Mark for this, um, I, on Whiskey Wednesday, I'm like an eight, eight and a half, nine, nine and a half, ten. I think the actual score I gave him was an 88 out of 100, which if we're rounding up is essentially a nine. And I think if you are a Macallan diehard fan, and you've had everything that they've officially brought out, this is something which is 
not necessarily missing from your collection, but it is something pretty unusual because it's a celebratory bottle of a very important man at McAllen, um, a rather important event in terms of British history. You know, someone taking over from a monarch, from the oldest reigning monarch in the Western world, or longest rather, well, oldest and longest, I suppose. Um, it kind of culminates all these things together, and bar means if you read Mark's sort of write up in the link below, it will give you a great, greater idea of how important this bottle actually is. And not normally a huge purple fan. Quite like that though. Very minimalist, quite approachable. And um, yeah, I'm, I keep wanting to open this, but I'm not going to. But yeah, overall, I gave it an 88 to Mark, but you know, if you round that up, it's pretty much a nine. You can call it an 8.8 .8 if you want. But it's one of those things that I'm, I've been very privileged to try twice at this point. And for those of you that are after a particularly rare and unusual and commemorative in many different ways of a bottle of Macallan, this is pretty solid. It ticks quite a lot of boxes. It's not that much more expensive than an official bottle of Macallan 25, but it's also older and rarer. So do with that what you will. Uh, but yes, an 8.8 .8, uh, out of 10, and I'm going to enjoy the rest of my night with this, as it's not often I get to drink 27-year-old Macallan on a very casual Thursday night. But thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all next week. Cheers.